Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So um, I've had quite a few questions in the comments below um, my workshop build video um, regarding the roof and how I constructed it. So uh, instead of just answering them down below I thought it would be a better idea to just do a quick video just exclusively about the roof and uh, how I made it. Okay so as you know um, this is a 16 by 8 workshop and I wanted to make it out of 2 by 3s the, uh, the main construction so for the roof I decided to use 2x3s and a few people have mentioned that they've done the same and they've had uh, sagging well I thought exactly that when I went to make mine uh, last year so I mean the answers to that would probably be use 2x4s um, I didn't want to do that because the cost of 2x4s throughout the build would be quite expensive and I didn't want to have a 2x4 roof and a 2x3 frame I wanted it to be all the same so I decided to go 2x3 all the way um, so because it's 8 feet wide I wanted an overhang at the front and an overhang at the back which I'll show you in a moment, that's on the outside so I had to purchase 9 foot lengths of 2x3 so I'll start off down the bottom so my idea was to keep it as lightweight as possible and if I could I wanted to do away with uh, boarding out the roof because usually you could say you could board the roof out with some OSB or some plywood and then add some felt on top or add some metal roofing sheets on top or whatever you fancy so what I did was I think it's every 40 centimeters if I remember correctly I've spaced a raft out at each interval 40 centimeters all the way along and I think there's 12 rafters in total and I've attached the rafters to the main frame by just some angle plates so you can see there each rafter is attached just with an angle plate so it's not screwed from up above down into the frame um, it's just attached here as you can see and that gives me access if I ever wanted to kind of change the roof completely I could just undo those screws pretty much and take the whole roof off um, you might think oh, in some strong wind it would rip the roof off but there's a plate in each side and like I said there's 12 in total it goes all the way along and there's, there's no movement whatsoever and it is a really windy day today actually and you can hear how quiet it is in here well it's a little bit windy but it was really windy earlier anyway so I've done that and then I've given it two rows of these like spacers noggins that go in between and interlock everything together oh here's that wind I was talking about yeah it's a pretty windy day there's no movement in here and the roof is fine so I've got those noggins in there they go all the way along locks everything together nicely as you can see I've got those angle brackets going all the way along and then what I did is I added um, well you, I would have had eaves both sides but I blocked the eaves up you can see these chunks these chunky pieces of wood here they are basically offcuts of 2 by 3 which I've cut to size and I've cut them sort of exact so that you have to mallet them in so I've whacked each one of these in with a mallet and that not only keeps everything like completely interlocked and straight so that there can't be any movement because everything is just like an interference fit there's just no movement but it helps with sandproofing and it helps with the structure of the roof as well just gives it that bit of extra support and then I've just gone around with some sealant on each one of these and just sealed them in you can see over here so those eaves are nicely blocked off and then in the middle of the frame so we've got the 8 foot section and then another 8 foot section so the weakest point kind of I've used another 2x3 here and I've just got a shelf bracket holding it up it, the, 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 it's not structural the shelf brackets it's just to keep it in position so what that, that's doing is it's stopping the, uh, the frame from sort of falling in on itself at the weakest point not that it would but it, it just prevents any kind of movement 
you can see and that is also touching um, along the tops here of these noggins just helping sort of the weakest point of the roof giving it a little bit of extra strength so you can see that there so um, of course nine times out of ten you see people build a roof uh, for a shed and they board it out of course ideally yeah it's better to board it out but as you know if you board out a large shed like this one it adds quite a bit of weight so I'd probably need four sheets of 4x8 uh, OSB or plywood that's quite a lot of weight going on the roof then you have to kind of scale the whole thing up use some uh, either use more rafters or bigger rafters and I thought it, that's probably not necessary and actually uh, this shed is getting on for a year old now and the truth is it, it, I don't think it is necessary so I have got corrugated bitumen roofing sheets on the top of here and I'll go outside in a minute and I'll go up the ladder and I'll show you those and directly under that there's just a wrap, a breathable wrap and then directly under that I've got this aluminium bubble wrap which helps with insulation and that is just stuck with instant grab straight to the wrap above it so um, there is no kind of structure here um, you're directly in contact with the roofing sheets but they are quite strong corrugated roofing sheets they're not too bad so you wouldn't want to go running across the roof but when I when I put these in I was on the roof myself and I just used sort of a couple of planks of wood as a catwalk to spread my weight and it worked fine didn't damage the roofing sheets or anything and you gotta ask yourself I mean how often do you go on the roof of your shed probably hardly ever so in terms of uh, boarding it out it would be great ideally and it's great for soundproofing and things like that but I've found that it isn't necessary in my case and I've had no problems whatsoever and as far as the frame goes I've had no problems with that either um, I had somebody I think from America talk about racking of the frame they said uh, after a while with some really bad wind you're gonna get the frame twisting and bending I, I don't believe so it is rock solid and I'll just demonstrate that now so with the frame I'll just show you how strong it is bearing in mind it's just two by threes I can hang on it I'm about 86 kilos no problem whatsoever so as you can see I was just uh, I was just swinging on the frame it is rock solid the uh, the frame where the door is is absolutely solid as well I've had no problem with it at all so that is all good windows are fine everything's fine I could board it out I'm not still not sure whether to bother to do that or not so yeah I think that's about everything for the roof um, if you do have any questions, please let me know. I'll try to answer them as best I can. But um, my conclusion is that you don't necessarily need to board out your roof. You can literally have rafters and roofing material directly on top. I am no expert, of course, but I'm just talking from experience. I've given this a go. It's a bit of an experiment. And so far, so good. It's worked perfectly for me. So um, now I'm just going to go on top and just give you a look at the roofing sheets. Here are the roofing sheets. As you can see, they're all laid out neatly and they are held down with self-tapping screws which are really long, they go straight into those rafters and it's all rock solid. And at the end, it's, I've just capped it off with some aluminium composite material which I cut to size, it's just a trim and that just helps to protect the ends of the boards and there's like a fascia board here and that's held up really well. It is nice and solid. And then going down, you can see the uh, the exposed rafters. I'm planning on boxing this off later on, but again, not necessary. And just on the subject of support, so we've got those eaves there, and then we've got um, so roughly halfway up. You can see how the uh, the roof sort of goes upwards on a gradient. I've added like a chock there and it just uh, helps to support that beam at the end and that's doing a really good job actually and, uh, same again on the other side you can see it's supported at the, the front of the shed and then that chock and then at the back 
Another question I had, I've just remembered, was, uh, well, comments and questions about the floor. People saying, uh, just various ways you should have done the floor. You should have used screws, not nails, things like that. Um, I've used annular nails, ring nails, recycled ring nails that I got out of pallet wood, rusty ones. And I've used pretty much all random sized pallet boards. And so we're at about eight months or nine months in now. And this floor, it's perfectly, to be perfectly honest with you, this floor is better, it is more solid than the floor in the upstairs of my house. The, the, these floorboards seem to be more solid and firm. So I've, I've uh, nailed them, they've been put down with ring nails and then I've just filled all the gaps in with sealant. But they're really thick boards. And I'm just demonstrating, you can see, it is, it is solid, there's no movement at all. I'll just put the camera down and show you. Here we go. So I'm 86 kilograms and you, there's no vibration, there's no movement. It's absolutely rock solid. I did mention, um, they, they, from the original video, they thought that I'd just screwed the frame to the floorboards, but that's not the case. It's screwed through the floorboards and actually into the subframe below, just to clear that one up. So that's about it for the shed roof. Uh, if you've got any questions, please let me know. I hope I've, um, I've answered everybody's questions about the roof. So far, so good. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. And like I say, as far as the frame goes, it is rock solid. There's no movement at all. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.